So, we know the marketing cycle is that's the ideal time. Do you know that from May through July, 65% of all the closings occur in those months for the whole year? That leaves seven other months for the other 35% to sell. Last year, 50% closed between March and June only because of the first time intervention and home buying program ending. Inventory, we're up 11% this year, Mr. Seller, but I have to tell you that our sales are down almost 1,000 less than when I stood here a year ago with the sales. So that 30,000 number is in jeopardy of going into the 28s and 29s, depending on how the second half of the year. We said that the prices are down 6.8% the first quarter, 5.6% year over year compared to May, Mr. Seller. And what we're finding through Stephen's help is that from the original list price in the MLS to the accepted price, there's a 7% difference. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, 10,000 people have preceded you and they made the 7% mistake. We are down 6.8% in the first quarter. Year to year, we're down almost 6%. And so, before I even get to pricing, I'm willing to bet we're 7% apart. <laughs> Mr. Seller, there's three types of sellers in the market. The REO lender. They represent 6.1% of the market today. You'll be surprised how many people are buying REOs. Short sellers, 27.8%, and equity sellers, the balance at 66 and 1. In the old days, you wouldn't know this, you young professionals. In the old days, we only had one seller putting them out on the market. Today, we've got three sellers, and your seller needs to understand this. Distressed purchases are running around 44%. They were 52% last month in Southern California, where the purchases. People are looking for distressed and foreclosed property. But I'm not, I'm not distressed. Oh, yes, you are. You're in this market. Okay? Marketing time. Foreclosures. They sell in 1.69 months. Short sales, 2.94 months. And our dear equity sellers, the 7% price over the market, which means really since we're starting in July, August, September, October. Okay, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? Okay, because that's the reality. A man's home is now his hassle, Mr. Seller. You've got it and you're asking me to get rid of it. And this is gonna be a big job to do in this market with all this competition. Okay, pricing, again, thanks to Stephen. Original listed price to the last listed price. REO lenders, they make the same mistake. They come on high, and if they don't sell right away, within 30 to 60 days, they make a price reduction. But between the original list price and their last listed price, you can see the difference. They start over 5%. Short sellers, almost the same thing. But they close at a higher based on the last listed price. And then the equity seller, whoops, that's 8%, not 7 They start at 92, then they finally make reductions and finally sell for 96%. Yes, but I'm in a different market. No, you're not. You know, they'll always tell you their home is different. My street's different. My city's different. No, it's not. Well, yeah, but what about the price? Well, it's the same thing. Under 500,000, 94% versus 99 in the last listed price. 500 to a million, 93%. They're 7% overpriced again. 10,000 people before you, and look what the numbers are. Above a million, it's 11%. They start overpriced before they sell. And then they end up selling 7% less. Okay, so. What buyers need to know, so that's the sellers. You need to hammer them with the 7% overpriced. But when you get to the buyer, how many of you are working with buyers today? Oh, isn't that fun? Look at all the taxi cab drivers. Okay? They can't pull the trigger. They're scared to death. Why? Well, the headwinds. Continuing price declines in housing. 
Every week, there's a report on the housing market, and that's no fun. Number two, yes, increasing defaults and foreclosures. Of course, the foreclosures are down, but that's because all the lenders won't foreclose now. They're just going to let that short sale drag on for the next three or four or five years. And then the economy, the lack of job creation. We got clobbered last month with the lack of jobs. And so the buyers are scared to pull the trigger. They don't know what's going on, what's going to happen, what's happening with regulation and everything else. And the buyers that are buying are buying that 44% of depressed property. But there is one question you need to ask your buyer. What do you think is going to happen to interest rates in the near future? Okay, so you better have a chart at your desk. You mortgage people want to get in good with realtors, create the chart. But this chart is essential to have in your interview with the buyer. Take today's price versus higher interest rates. Stephen did this chart so that we could work it off on the uh, on the big board. Here it is, from four and a half to seven percent. Now, again, us very old professional people, <laughs> we, we, we sold it twice that number. But we're being very conservative for you young people. We're keeping it in this little range, okay? Just so you feel better. Okay. But ladies and gentlemen, if your buyer says he wants a $3,000 month payment, it's a $600,000 loan. Should the rates go to six and a half, which was very favorable for many, many years, he loses $100,000 of purchasing power. Now, Mr. Buyer, what do you think the odds are of the house going down 100,000 versus rates going up one and a half to two percent? And can you afford or do you want to take this risk? And that's pretty true around this number and below you're going to be about a hundred thousand dollar difference now if you go to the bigger numbers your big million dollar buyers who can afford five thousand dollars a month at this rate to keep the same payment they lose two hundred thousand in purchasing power and the reason this is so dramatic is because our rates are so low right now but we can't stay there QE2 ends next week we don't know what the Fed's going to do. We know that the inflation is going up. We know the core inflation is up higher. And these things are going to start having an effect on the lenders unless we can keep all of the rest of the world having economic debt crisis and everybody panicking and everybody going to cash instead of stocks or investments. But it's not going to stay that way long because us old people know how fast interest rates can move. Now, show them the exact same chart, ladies and gentlemen. You've got buyers that say, oh, a foreclosure. I want to offer 50%. <laughs> okay. I read in the paper that last year, all of the foreclosures sold at only 62% of their value. Mr. Buyer, are you prepared to buy a block of houses? Some in Inglewood, Compton, Downey, you know. Or, if you're looking here, you've got to understand, 10,000s of people have preceded you. This is what we're looking at for rain. If it's a brand new REO lender, there's not going to be any negotiations. If it is been on the market for maybe 30, 40 days, then maybe you're going to get 2%. But if you think you're going to go around town and offer 35, 40% less, you're going to do it, just not with me. Okay, price, well, of course, maybe you're not working and you can drive them around. <laughs> okay, price ranges show them the same thing. Within whatever price ranges, these are the changes. If the house has been on the market more than 60, 90 days, then you can look that uh, you can go and negotiate more. There hasn't been any adjustment from the original list price. 